Hello my fellow Dirty Dirty Gardeners. I'm Iron the Dirty Dragon. Today I'm going to show you some of the common pests that I deal with. In my garden you probably do too. And uh, I'm not going to be able to show you necessarily the bugs because some of them come out at night or when I'm not around, smartly. <laughs> but I will show you uh, what the bugs look like in a picture. And I'll put that inside the video and I'm going to show you what the damage is that they do. Um, and even if you're lucky, I'll tell you a little bit about how you can deal with them. Okay, let's move on to the first one. This here is the damage done by weevils. It's like they've made lace out of my poor little roto here. Uh, weevils, um, they come out at night, so what they recommend is that you get up at night, come out and squish them, pinch them off, kill them. That's not my style. I like to sleep at night. <laughs> so there are other ways that you can deal with it. Uh, one is diatomaceous earth, which is essentially like um, very, uh, it's almost like walking on glass for them. You sprinkle it around the base of the shrub and it cuts up their uh, exoskeleton and then they bleed out. And the other one is beneficial nematodes. I think you have to do that a certain time of year. Put them in the ground before they hatch or whatever, I'm not exactly sure. I have never tackled it before myself. I will this year because they are really starting to piss me off with my poor roto. Uh, so I'm going to get the diatomaceous earth and give that a go and uh, see if that slows the problem down. At this point I think they're probably done their business because these are new leaves now and there's nothing on them. So my guess is that they come out at a certain time of year, but um, I'm not a bug person. <laughs> so you're going to have to research that, I think, on your own and figure out when the best time is to apply these things. But anyway, uh, diatomaceous earth, you can probably just get at any uh, nursery. Not sure about the nematodes, though. You've probably all seen this on your plants at some point or another. This is a spit bug, spittle bug. This is actually the, uh, the, the baby stage of a leaf hopper. And uh, from what I understand, they don't cause a lot of damage. They're kind of like, they, they suck the sap a little bit from your plant, but they're not a terrible. This kind of damage, you've probably all seen it on your hostas and ligularias and stuff, usually only happens on the plants in the wet places. This is from slugs and snails. They have little sharp beaks and love to put holes. Um, as far as I know, beer traps are probably one of the best ways to deal with slugs. Uh, you put a shallow dish full of beer. I don't know why they're attracted to it, but they go in it and they drown. Um, I've never had really a big problem with slugs, a little more so this year because of the fact that it's been so cold and wet, but um, I don't ever have to really address it. Most of my damage is very superficial, so uh, that's, but anyway, that's what it looks like. This nonsense right here. They chew the stem, sometimes all the way around, sometimes only a bit and they leave it so that sometimes the buds are just hanging or they've popped off they don't eat the buds in this case this is a poppy and uh, I found the bud around here somewhere I, they really like echinops for whatever reason and these guys are caused by stink bugs I don't know why and I don't know why it goes black Ooh, ominous. Very yucky. And um, I haven't seen any stink bugs yet on any of my plants. I will maybe take a look and see if um, if there's something out on the front plants. Because I've noticed some damage on some of my plants in the front yard too. But anyway, that's what the damage is from a stink bug. Couldn't find any stink bugs out front, which I'm kind of relieved about. Because they're so stank. And they will actually make me gag. 
<laughs> this smell of them is so pungent. Um, you're supposed to take them and like pick them off the plants and put mm, put them in a put them in a container. <laughs> I don't even I don't even like to talk about it because it makes <laughs> makes me want to throw up. Put them in a put them in a container and okay. So you're gonna have to look that up on your own. <laughs> This, this smell is so horrible. I can't even talk about it. Okay, so you guys are going to have to look that one up, but I'll put a picture and stuff up for you. Here we have a twofer. My poor hellebores are absolutely being ravaged right now by... These are uh, spider mites, I believe. And up in here, we've got aphids going nuts. Aphids are green and then sometimes black. Those little puffy green gross things there. Yeah, and then the white flies are sticking to the uh, honey, I guess, nectar, whatever, that the aphids leave. I'm not exactly sure the technical terms for these because I don't know a lot about bugs, really. In this case, because it's such a bad infestation, I am literally going to cut my hellebore to the ground because it would take so much effort to spray all of these to get rid of the, the bugs and uh, try and clean it up. Um, this It's done flowering. A lot of the leaves are looking a little worse for wear. Some of them are kind of looking like they've got uh, some fungal stuff going on anyway. There's a couple of good ones here. So I'll probably leave those ones, but anything else, I'm just going to cut it to the ground. It's just, this is just horrible. Uh, if you want to tackle it yourself, if you see this kind of thing. Oh, listen. There's a little tree frog in there. Oh, how cute is that? Eek. Anyway, if you want to tackle this yourself, if you see this kind of situation, you can get um, bug spray. It basically is a soap, and what that does is it coats the bodies of insects, the pests, and um, prevents them from breathing because they breathe through their skin. And so that would kill them off. It looks to me here like an ant. I see there's an ant here. Where did it go? There it is. So he's probably farming those aphids. Yummy food. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you have to spray every single leaf and flower, and you have to get underneath as well. You can probably pull off the worst of them and spray the ones that aren't quite so bad. So that's an alternative as well if you, if you don't want to cut your plant to the ground. I'm just a little bit more impatient when it comes to this kind of thing. I really don't like dicking around with bugs. Just, just freaking ew. Okay, my lovelies, that's all I've got for you today for the yucky bugs in the garden. There are, of course, more, and I think food gardeners deal with a lot worse. God, something, something smells funky out here. Probably the irises. <laughs> I find they smell kind of like dish soap. You know, the classic irises? The Dawn dish soap or something? Today's about stinky things, apparently. Anyway, um, some people like that shit. I don't like that. I don't like smelling dish soap when I walk through the garden. But anyway, okay, so <laughs> back to the bugs. Bad bugs. Bad bugs in the garden. Uh, I've given you, I think, five that plague me regularly. Uh, I don't really care too much about it because um, I figure... Uh, you know, we're, we're in nature, or if we, you know, we have a garden, so we're going to invite nature in, and I deal with them when they really harm my plants, but for the most part, I just ignore them. <laughs> I'm kind of a tough love mum that way, I guess, plant mum. Um, so, yeah, but if you, at least now you know maybe what to look for when you see damage in your garden, and uh, how to deal with some of them. Uh, anyway, that's it for day today. Peace out, bitches.